What is Docker? Hey everyone, Garth Jolte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're going to demystify one of the hottest technologies in the DevOps scene today. Docker is an open source container based technology. What does that mean? Well, Linux containers, believe it or not, have been around for a long time. So why all of a sudden are they popular? We'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, a container allows a developer to package up an application and all of its parts, so the stack that it runs on, the dependencies that are associated with it, package it all up in this box, this container, which is an isolated environment. The application has all that it needs to run inside of this container. What that means is the underlying host, the operating system, the environment that it runs on is completely abstracted from the application. And the problem that this solves is dependency hell. Dependency hell is something that application developers have been dealing with for a long time. What it means is I build my application on my development machine. It works great. Then I deploy my application to say a QA machine or a production environment and all of a sudden it doesn't work. And it leaves sysadmins and developers pointing fingers at each other and it starts fights. Hey, developer, your application, it doesn't work in our environment. Fix it. Hey, sysadmin, it worked fine in my environment. Why doesn't it work in your environment? Fix your environment. Big companies rely on container-based technology to run their business. Take Google, for instance. They deploy over 2 billion containers across their data centers every week because it helps with continuous integration, continuous delivery, portability, scalability, density, some of the things that we'll be talking about here. So why are containers all of a sudden popular? Well, Docker is that reason. Docker is bringing it to the masses because it's giving us this workflow around containers that makes it easy for everyone to use. This technology is super hot. It's going to play a big role in the future of software development. And even Microsoft said that they're going to support it in Windows at some point in the near future. Let's dig in and see what Docker is all about. So Docker separates applications from the underlying operating system that it runs on, exactly like virtual machines separated the operating system from the underlying hardware that it ran on. And here's a visualization right from Docker's homepage that outlines the differences between deploying your application to a virtual machine versus Dockerizing your application. So with VMs, you have the guest OS to worry about. It's a part of our application, which may weigh a lot. So it really decreases portability and it's, it, it, it introduces fat requirements into our application. Not to mention, we have to worry again about that tie-in between our application and the OS. With Docker, it virtualizes the OS. So only our application and all of its dependencies are contained, and that's all we have to worry about, which makes it extremely fast, extremely portable, and we don't have the operating system to worry about. It's outside of our container. Let's talk about some of the benefits that Docker brings to the table here. Number one, scalability. These containers are extremely lightweight, which makes scaling up and scaling down very fast and very easy. We can launch more containers as we need them or shut them down when we no longer need them. Dockerized applications are extremely portable. You can move them very easily. We're going to get into images and registries, but essentially we can take a snapshot of our environment, upload it to a registry, public or private, and then download that image and start making containers off it uh, virtually anywhere. And that kind of goes hand in hand with deployment uh, because these containers can run almost anywhere. We can deploy it to desktops, laptops, physical servers, virtual machines, public, private clouds, you name it. Density is another big one. Because we're dealing with isolated containers, that means we can put more of them onto a machine so we can make more efficient use of our resources, which is going to result in fewer machines and also reduce licensing costs for the shared resources on that machine. There are many more benefits than just these to Docker. These are some of the big ones I wanted to highlight. But really what it boils down to is Docker dramatically reduces the entire development lifecycle from development to testing to deployment and then iterating through that over and over again throughout the entire life of the application. So why use Docker and why is it tearing up the DevOps scene? Well, it's enabling developers to build any app in any language using any stack because we're no longer tied to the environment underneath the application. And on top of that, it's helping to usher in the microservices era. Traditionally, you built these huge monolithic tier-based applications where all these tiers were dependent on one another. Now you're starting to see an application getting broken up into parts and these small containerized isolated parts which makes it uh, much more efficient for developing because a developer can focus on just that part and they can use any language or technology they need to help them build that part. And on top of that, it becomes much easier to deploy because you're only deploying parts of the application, not the application as a whole. Dockerized apps can run anywhere and on anything. And this makes everyone happy. Developers, sysadmins, QA testers, release engineers, because we no longer have to cross our fingers when we 
deploy it to a different environment or port it to a different environment. And finally here, last but not least, it unites developers and sysadmins in that fight against dependency hell. No more fighting or finger pointing or giving each other the evil eye in the break room. That's right, you're going to see a lot more developers and sysadmins become BFFs because of Docker. Let's move on and take a look at the components inside of Docker. Let's start with the core components of Docker, which consist of the Docker daemon, which think of it as the runtime. It's going to run on the host machine and you're going to spin up containers inside of that daemon. And then you have the Docker client, which is the CLI you will use to interact with the daemon. If you're on a Linux machine, that's all you'll ever need. And you can even run the Docker client outside of that machine to interact with the daemon. If you're on a non-Linux kernel, such as Windows or OS X, then you've got an extra layer in there called boot to Docker. So you'll need to install VirtualBox and then boot to Docker, which will essentially spin up a virtual environment, a Linux virtual environment on top of that non-Linux kernel. Once you're up and running, you'll be ready to Dockerize your app. And here are the workflow components you'll be using to make that happen. It all starts with the Docker image. An image is a template that contains your environment, the base operating system, your application, the stack that it runs on, and all of its dependencies. And this is where the magic in Docker really starts to shine through. So these images are a lot like an onion. They're layered. So you start here with a base layer, a base operating system. Take Ubuntu, for example. And then you start adding your settings and your environment on top of it. So let's say that we add our application and, and all its dependings as a layer on top of that onion. So we'll call this one version 1. Version 1 is ready to go, so we deploy it out there to, to our environment, to all of our servers out there. And then when we're ready to, to, to work on version 2, iterative development, we add another layer to it. There's version 2. And here's the beauty of images in Docker. All of these machines that already had our application on it, they don't have to re-download the entire image, they just download that layer. And that's what makes Docker so lightweight, fast, and simple when it comes to deployment. Next up, we have the Docker container, and this is how we essentially turn those images on. We spin up a container, specify an image, and there we go. We've got our live environment and application running in that isolated container. We can start, stop, move, and delete containers. The Docker registry is another very powerful aspect of Docker. This is where we can store our images. But we can store them privately and collaborate with our team members, or we can share them publicly and collaborate with the world. So you can head over to docker.com, create an account, create private or public repositories. Public repositories are searchable via the Docker Hub. So imagine this. Imagine you're just starting out, and rather than creating your images from scratch, you do a search to find somebody that's already built your environment, already, already has a technology stack similar to what you want to use, you know, has an operating system, has a web server, has a database server, has all of that stuff wrapped inside of an image, you can use that as your base image and then customize it to your environment. It's very much like GitHub is for projects and source code, Docker Hub is for images. A Docker file gives us a way to automate image construction. It's just a, a declarative way of setting up your images. So we'll fill up this file with instructions, and then rather than doing it all manually, like logging onto your base image and installing software, we can just put all these commands inside of a file and then use that file to automatically build an image. Let's get a visual of how this process works, how to Dockerize an app, and just get a, an idea of where all these components fit in the big picture. So we're just starting out. We need a base image. Let's take our base Ubuntu image. So we head over to the Docker Hub. We search for a base Ubuntu image. We find it. We do a Docker pull to pull it in to our local Docker host. Now we've got an image, but we want to install some software on that base Ubuntu image, right? So we would do a Docker run on that image, which would give us a container. Now, inside of that container, we would install our software, install our stack, install our application, install whatever we need to. And when we're set, we would commit that container, which would create a new image, another layer. So we would call that version one. We've got another layer on top of the onion. So at this point, if we're comfortable with version one, we could push it back up to a, to a private or public repository where others could then download it and start spinning up containers based on it. Now, let's say that we're ready for version two. We would do the same thing. We would uh, just work with version one here, pull that into a container, commit it, which would create a version two image. And again, the beautiful thing here is all these other uh, machines out there that have our application running can just simply download that new layer. They don't have to download the entire image all over again. And that's really it. That's your workflow right there. It's actually really simple once you start getting familiar with images, spinning up containers, putting software on it, so on and so forth. And rather than do all this stuff manually, that's what the Docker file is for. So rather than spinning up a container from an image and logging onto that image and installing software, we could just simply put all those commands in a Docker file and then run Docker build passing in that file, which would automatically generate that image. Oh, I should also mention you can tag images. 
So for instance, we could do image colon v1, image colon v2. And just like with Ubuntu, if you wanted to, to, to work with a specific base image of Ubuntu, you could do Ubuntu colon you know, 12.04, 14.04, whatever version of Ubuntu you want to work with, or Ubuntu colon latest, which will always give you the latest version. So tags are just a way to, uh, to, to work with a specific layer of your image. Now you're going to see a lot of tools pop up in the DevOps scene around Docker to help automate certain aspects of this workflow. In fact, Google already built one called Kubernetes. Kubernetes sits down here and it's a way that we can schedule and manage the deployment of our containers. And that's going to be extremely useful, especially if you have a large application with a lot of parts to it and all those parts have short development cycles. Rather than do this stuff manually, which could become a time vacuum, you'll want to you know, use a tool like Kubernetes to, uh, to automate the scheduling and deployment of those parts. In the CBT Micronugget, we defined what Docker is all about. We saw that it's a platform for building, shipping, and running our applications. It's a way that we can isolate our application from the underlying host and put inside of that container everything that application needs to run. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.